So in this video, I wanted to share a story about the first time I realized that I was stuck in wage slavery. Yes, it's a story about when I was fired, but that actually wasn't the weird part. Let's get into it. So I always felt that something was wrong. The idea of being forced to go to work every single day, even back in school, when I imagined my adult life. Now you might be surprised to hear this, but I actually enjoyed being in school. I enjoyed learning things, despite not being very smart. I got good grades, but it was all just pure hard work. And I went on to the university and I got my degree in economics. And then I got my first full-time job around, I think it was something like 2007. And I remember they gave me my laptop, my cell phone, they showed me to my office room. And I remember feeling so excited. You know, I was finally at the goal line. All the schoolwork, all the late night studying, everything I have worked so hard for. And I remember sitting there in my office room on that very first day and just feeling special, you know? Feeling like I made it. And all of that sort of faded in just a few weeks' time. You know, the meetings, the bureaucracy, and you know, just the feeling of being trapped in a place where I could not leave wherever I wanted. Now, at the time, I was very young, I was in my 20s, and I still had a lot of energy. Sure, it was hell getting up in the morning, and I got energy drained throughout the week, but I still had enough energy in the evenings, and on the weekends to hang out with friends and go on dates. And I was finally making real money, or at least that's what it felt like at the time. But I noticed really quickly how I became super dependent on those paychecks. You know, I, I couldn't just leave. Now, my salary, it wasn't even that big at the time, but it was a lot for a poor kid from the wrong side of town. Now the work itself, it was actually kind of fun. I was in charge of forecasting how much was needed to be produced in the factory. And I enjoyed working with numbers and spreadsheets, coming up with formulas and presenting these forecast accuracy reports. I mean, it was fun, but I didn't actually love it. You know, when you work in a company, they often instill this sense of fam family, you know, you're doing it for the family, but I never felt it, and so I never loved it. And that company, it always sort of felt cold and detached from any sense of humanity. It was just all about profits, you know? And I was, I was kind of surprised, you know? Like, I've had so many jobs since then, and it's always the same story. It's all about the profits. But back then, I remember sort of being shocked, you know? And I remember this one terrifying day when I talked to a guy worked in the IT department and this guy was in his 50s and really nice to me but he was complaining endlessly about the company and he trashed everyone there and the thing you have to remember about people who trash talk other people is that you can always count that they most likely trash talk you as well behind your back but one day after hearing him trash talk the place for about an hour I just sort of asked him, like, why don't you just quit? And he sort of froze for a moment, and then he told me. And what he told me actually scared me so much that I eventually became a consultant. He told me that he was afraid to look for new work because he was old. He only knew the system that they had in the company. He was comfortable, you know, in his job, despite hating it, because he was the expert, but the moment he would step out of the office, he would just be a nobody. Now, as much as he despised his job, he was much more afraid of, you know, looking for other work. And so he was stuck, basically. And I remember looking into his eyes, and he looked like this frightened kid for a moment. And I realized that this was my fate as well. You know, one day I would become obsolete and frightened to lose a job that I hate. And that image shaped my future. You know, it's an image that's always been stuck in my head. And you know, it's funny how sometimes you worry about something and then something happens. So this was during 2008. 
And so the big financial crash happened. I had worked there for about a year or two years actually. And a lot of companies had to downsize their staff. And I remember my boss called me into her office and she explained that she had to let me go. She told me that it wasn't because of my work performance, but because they had to let go of people in a first come, first serve manner. Now, my initial reaction was, of course, shock and disappointment, maybe a little bit of anger. But strangely enough, when I got home, I was actually surprisingly glad because I hated that place. You know, I had wasted a year or two of my life there, so it wasn't so bad. But that's not the weirdest part. This is the weirdest part. On my last day at this shitty job, they invited everyone into the conference room to celebrate my departure. Yeah, it was sort of like, you know, when somebody quits a job, finds a new job and moves on. But I didn't leave to find a new job. I was fired. So why the celebration? Why were we eating cake? And then I knew, you know, I could suddenly just see these invisible strings. It all made sense to me. The celebration... It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me at all. It was the management hiding the fact that they were firing people. Now, if, if the company had a soul, if my boss actually cared, she would have called everyone in and they all would have chipped in maybe for a gift for me, but she would have been honest and told the truth to me, to everyone, you know, that she was sorry. The company forced her to let people go. It wasn't her decision. Times are hard, blah, blah. But this charade, you know, with the cake and the flowers, just felt cold-blooded somehow. It wasn't real. You know, the purpose was to sugarcoat the firing. And I know companies do these things very differently, and I'm sure you have your stories. But the thing that gets me every single time, whenever a person is being fired, is that nobody steps up for that person. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not crying here because people didn't stand up for me. It's just that... I noticed that in that moment when I was let go, suddenly it was clear that I became the ghost in the office. Or worse, like a person was sick and people were afraid to stand next to me because they didn't want to get infected. People just ignored me. People who I actually considered my friends, people who shared their personal stories with me, people who came to me for emotional support. Suddenly I was just dead to them. And you know, in a way, I, I sort of get it. You know, people are mostly afraid of losing their jobs. But I see it so often and I just think it sucks. It's so inhumane. It's so cold-blooded. Like, where's the camaraderie? You know, when a person gets fired, why doesn't everyone go on a strike until the person who got fired gets hired back? You know, the only time people here in Sweden go on a strike is when they want to raise their wages. But when people get fired, Nobody cares. It's so accepted that companies fire people. Now, this wasn't the first or the last time I was fired, but it was a very defining moment where I realized that, you know, companies are essentially soul-sucking entities that don't deserve the respect or loyalty of people. And that's why I endorse ideas like quiet quitting, that's why I endorse the idea of early retirement. You know, it's screw the companies because they don't care about you. They never did and they never will. As always, thank you for listening and do me a favor and tap that like button to show your support. Subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. Until next time, stay hungry, relentless and strong in your journey of escaping weight slavery. Bye.